This is what Goose Green Farms Laguna Isla Pond currently looks like. When at full capacity, the pond holds 1.5 million tonnes of water, an amount that could supply Stanley for 400 days. However, worryingly, this is now the second year in a row that the pond has fully dried up, now resembling a lake that's got nothing left to leak. Walking around here at Laguna Isla, it almost takes your breath away. The ground is literally crumbling beneath my feet in an area, an expanse of land that really should be full of water. Satellite images tell the same story of a dried out area of land that looks stark in comparison to neighbouring wetlands. Andy Pollard is an agricultural advisor for the Falkland Islands government and has over 20 years of work experience in the local sector. There's been some, um, some climate modelling work done by, you know, kind of through Jim McAdam and the Queen's University of Belfast and and that is, that is really our evidence base for, for suggesting that, you know, kind of the, that the land is going to continue to, um, to dry into the, into the future. So why should dry lands over time be a worry for landowners? Well, it's twofold. Environmentally, areas such as here are habitats for many different species that then in turn support a healthy ecosystem. But socially and economically, if the land can't be used to shelter or to graze, then this in turn will have a huge impact on the productivity of a farm and therefore the livelihoods of farmers and landowners. Science already undertaken in the Falklands offers potential reasons why areas of land like Laguna Isla are drying out. Coming out of winter and then going into spring, you start to get negative moisture loss because the evapotranspiration rate is higher than the, than the rainfall rate. It includes critical things like uh, um, wind, it includes uh, rainfall, it includes um, daylight hours, uh, sunshine intensity, all of these type of things. In the Falkland Islands government's 20-year environment strategy published in September, land and freshwater is a strategic objective that is addressed. The purpose of the environment strategy is basically to set, um, I guess, some long-term goals and a kind of vision of the future that we can work towards, as well as um, kind of setting out some of the actions to guide the work going forwards. And that's basically to work towards having a better environment for future generations. The environment strategy states the government's aim to improve terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem integrity for the benefit of current and future generations through considering the ecological impact of and improving land management approaches practices and incentivization. Certainly a driving force behind improvements will be research in the nation's soil and wetlands, something Sari's Dr. Steffi Carter is leading on. I managed the, the soil mapping project um, at ran for about two years from 2018 to 2020 and the idea was to, to get some baseline maps on the soils that we have. Um, we didn't really have any information for farmers in terms of you know, nutrient level in certain areas. We didn't really have a map on erosion or peat extents. That's what that project was about. Dr Carter's online soil map database can now serve as a key local climate change mitigation tool for the future. As part of her current work, Dr Carter is producing a wetlands action plan. It's putting loggers in place, data loggers, so we don't just have a one-off picture, but they actually they take data every 5, 10 or 15 minutes or so, looking at water level, water temperature. Um, and I really hope that FIG will be able to maintain those loggers so we've got that information not just now, but also five or ten years into the future. Looking to the future, there are recommended actions that landowners can and are taking now, though, to combat drying lands. One way farmers can adjust, for example, is that if you know, if you know that you're not going to have water in the summer in several camps, you try to put water into those camps. Um, or alternatively you graze them before or, or after, you know, when there is rain, you know, kind of in those camps. But sat at the coffee table working through each farm's plan and listening to what the farmers are doing, um, I was actually kind of really surprised by how much progress there is with people experimenting and, and doing kind of habitat restoration, conservation, grazing management strategies and stuff to, to deal with things. As for Laguna Isla, only time will tell if the land will manage to recover to suitable water and chemical levels to support life again. However, if nothing else, it will continue to serve as a stark warning of a wider national issue.